This is going to be a bit of a short uh, announcement. It's not going to be too long, uh, but it's an overview as well, just to give you an idea. Now, as I've been tackling a number of topics on, uh, on, on, on this platform, a number of colleagues, especially ministers of the gospel, uh, fellow individuals that we share time here on Facebook, actually asked that I go deeper. Uh, one of them is a gentleman called Jeconiah. He asked that I go deeper into the subject that I had tackled briefly in my previous video. I don't want to start referencing it, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, he actually asked and said, Rev, you need to go deep into this topic because people need to understand. So what exactly is that topic? The topic is, thank you, uh, good morning, Mwemba. So the topic is entitled, The Seven Deadly Spells. And what I'd like to do is I want to make it more deliberate and more specific on a specific day. So what I would like to do in your co in the comments now, please give suggestions and I'll check to see what suggestions come through of a day and the time when we can run this series. Um, I'll give you an overview of the series, but the series is called the Dead, the Seven Deadly Spells from the Abyss. I did the series in 2012, and even though we're not online in those days, it went viral. It caused a shakeup in the gospel music industry, in the church circles here in Zambia. It really shook up quite a bit of people because there are so many assumptions that people have that are very wrong when it comes to ministry and understanding the end time deception. So that series really blessed a lot of people and people wanted to know more about the information. I redid it on Christian Voice in 2019. Again, very, very popular. Lots of people loved it. I had very good feedback about it. And so what I'd like to do now is actually run this as a series here on Facebook. But what I'm going to do is ask you to suggest a day and a time when we can do them. I noticed that here at my home, I have a bit of a challenge with the internet, especially after 6 o'clock. Between 6 o'clock in the evening and 8 in the evening, it's very, very bad. So I would not want, uh, yes, uh, Grayford is the same one, yes. I want to run the updated, revised one. Very powerful. You'll be blessed. So um, I would prefer to do it over the weekend. If, if it were up to me, I would like to pick Saturday 10 in the morning. So what I'd like you to do is just give me your own insight on whether you think Saturday 10 o'clock would be good so that we can do 10 in the morning or 9 in the morning. But it'll be a bit comprehensive and uh, we will run that. Thanks, uh, Mwemba. Yes, it was very popular. Lots of people loved it. So we're going to do that from 10 to 11 or from 9 to 10. We'll pick a time that's suitable. Maybe from 8 to 9. Just, just indicate which time you think would be good. But nice and early, nice and crisp and sharp. And what I'm going to do this time is I will share slides as well so that you're able to follow on slides. So I will give both uh, a, a Zoom link and I'll also give... A Facebook link and you can follow on both. So for those of you who are not familiar with what the seven deadly spells are, very quickly let them let me spell them out for you. The first spell is actually evolution and the enemy has been at work to discount or discredit creation and so this concept of evolution has been something that has been pushed over and over for many years, uh, decades actually, the father of evolution, of course, is Charles Darwin. And from that period onwards, there's been a deliberate push for this particular belief that we evolved and, and, and came through. And then the second um, spell is eroticism. We live in an era where LGBTQI and all sorts of other things are really running strong. We have seen even the church embracing some sex, sex, same sex marriages. We've seen so much that has now become the norm. We are watching uh, programs on scary uh, and uh, to imagine that our kids are being shown same sex interactions that are of a sexual nature tells you where we're going. But eroticism has been a big challenge. We'll tackle that deeply. The third spell is skepticism. The concept of doubt in a very deep way. I'm not talking about Thomas, the disciple kind of doubt, but I'm, I'm talking about something much deeper and a bit more on the negative side. 
kind of doubt. And it's, it's, it's skepticism has become the cornerstone of many people. The whole atheist movement, agnostic movement, is born of skepticism. I can even tell you a lot of these uh, movements that have even started in Africa, such as spiritualism, are all born out of skepticism. And the skepticism comes because of the hurts that have been perpetrated by what I call lawless uh, pastors and teachers and preachers. They have harmed the, bread, the, the body of Christ. They've harmed people. They've injured individuals and caused them to become skeptical about the truth of Christ. So today we have a skeptical generation. I'll really tackle that. The fourth spell, was that the fourth spell? I think that was the third spell. The fourth spell, a lot of people don't know this, but it's a very powerful spell, is the spell of humanism. Humanism is a very, very powerful spell. And for those of you who really want to know how deeply powerful humanism is, I want you to go and study the humanism charter. I want you to go and study the Georgia Guidestones and take the two. So take the humanism charter. There are 10 uh, commandments on the humanism charter. And then take the Georgia Guidestones and look at those rules on the Georgia Guidestones and put them together. You're going to see that they are all birthed from the same people. There is a group out there that says man is the center, not God. Humanism is the charter by which the entire United Nations and the entire world system is now operating by. Human rights look very good on the cover, but that is a deep deception that runs into some very, very strange territory. So I will be dealing with this. And I know for some people, they'll be very offended to learn that even feminism is birthed out of humanism. Um... Godlessness and atheism is born out of humanism. So I will show you in the lesson when we get round to humanism precisely what that is. It's a very, very scary terrain and people don't have a clue and just embrace. In fact, it's humanism that will drive us into something called transhumanism. I'll talk about that in that future episode. Then the fifth, um, the fifth, uh, What's it called now? The fifth spell is something called romanticism. People don't understand what romanticism is and so they get it wrong. Romanticism, very basically put, is the worship and exaltation of emotions. If A number of people saw my status yesterday and some didn't understand me. I talked about Pentecostalism and I talked about charismatic, the charismatic movement. And people got me wrong. I said... That Pentecostalism, classic Pentecostalism, is birthed and born in the concept of the word. They are founded on the word and doctrine. So any traditional Pentecostal church is very word and doctrine centered. The charismatic movement is power centered. So the focus in the charismatic movement is about the power that is manifest through the gifts of the spirit. And there's very much a belittling of the doctrine of the word. In fact, uh, I always remember some of the great charismatic preachers and teachers, celebrity teachers of the 90s used to call seminary cemeteries. So they'll say, don't go to a theological cemetery because they belittled the concept of getting sound knowledge to back the power. And so we see a lot of irresponsibility that has been birthed in the charismatic movement. Now the truth is that word and power go together. Knowledge and power go together. You can't have one without the other or else you have, you have you know, if you have just word without power, it is dead. If you have power without word, it is deceptive. So, 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 so you need a balance of both and I'll go very deeply to show you that in this day and age we become worshippers of emotions and that's why I called yesterday in my status I said that the new chari the charismatic movement has turned Christians into emotional zombies. You know what an emotional zombie is? An emotional zombie is somebody that looks for a feeling to ascertain the presence of God. So they equate the presence of God to, to hair standing on the back and having you know a, a woozy feeling and getting into these emotional ecstatic states. My friend, that is very deceptive. And I will show you when I teach that. I will show you voodoo ceremonies. I hope I have videos to play. I will show you voodoo ceremonies. I will show you ceremonies of wizards and witch doctors praying. Then you listen to those prayers and watch those voodoo ceremonies. And then I'll juxtapose them with charismatic 
manifestations in churches and you show me if there's a difference. You ought to be very, very careful what spirit you follow. And so I'm going to be teaching you and showing you the differences in romanticism. It's a powerful spell that has taken hold of a lot of people in this day and age. So many people, my daughter is asking me, yeah? Okay, wait, let me finish, then I'll come and put for you, okay? So a lot of people have failed to understand and even distinguish this thing, and so they have become very, very attached to emotionalism. That's why so many people, when they hear this prophet so-and-so, there's so-and-so, so they are rushing there. The sixth spell is actually pantheism. Pantheism is that God is all and all is God. Collective consciousness, the concept that God is in everything, this idea is very, very dangerous. Yes, there could be some Christian justification for such a belief, but then when you understand the way I understand Hinduism and Eastern teaching, then you understand that this is not anything close to what Christianity teaches, but this has been espoused by those people that are using relics and pushing relics across to Christendom. Relics can be anything from a crucifix to a rosary.